Drama City You are plugged in for the Podcast Wrestling Society, where you can get dynamic weekly pro wrestling and MMA related content. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at P-O-D-W-R-E-S Society so that you can stay in the know. Faith is the place and the sky is the limit. And if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. Woo! 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 Now, your host, he is the one and only Troy Adams. Strap in, buckle up, and hold on. It's another exciting episode of the Podcast Wrestling Society. Subscribe to the show and follow us on social media to join the society. I am your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and whenever I see a bald man with a goatee walking down the street, I want to run that mofo over with a car. I am Troy Adams, and with me today, he is an original member of the society, so he's just as crazy as me. He is the crowbar to my David Flair he is Greg. What up, Greg? What up? Or do you prefer what? prefer Devin Storm? Ah, uh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Choices. That's that's a yeah. That's a hell of a choice. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Oh man. Well, uh, as you may have noticed, everybody, we have a new theme song headed into October. I uh, figured I'd change it up a little bit because we have our first ten episodes in the books. Uh, I think episode 10 was very uh, very uh, interesting. I I personally, I usually don't listen to our podcast back that often, but I have to say I listened to it back a couple times because, I don't know, it, it entertained me. But uh, I don't me know. what What do you think of it? I loved it. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. I mean, it was, maybe, I'm, uh, maybe I'm a little biased. I also had three people that I know listen to this tell me the same thing. That was one of our better ones. I like so that. So now yeah. we have to top it. Yeah, exactly. So for all of you out we there, will. oh, we will for we sure. We can. We will. <laughs> My gosh, I had to get the Roman reference in right off the bat. Uh, for, Why not? I, sh- yeah, you know what? Got You're the only one who shares my opinion that I know. So. <laughs> Got, if you're gotta gonna get, do with it, you're gonna do it here with anyone. Why not you? <laughs> get the get the Roman <laughs> reference in early since it took so long to crown him the the guy <laughs> in, right. in real life. But for all of you listening, uh, just a heads up: after last week, Greg and I have got together. We have ten episodes in the book, like I said, and we've put our heads together. We've decided on a somewhat new format for the show. We are going to bring you the news right off the bat. But we are not bringing the list, bro, on this episode. From now on, we decided, you know, we need we need more subscribers. We need more traffic, more traffic, bro, headed over to our YouTube page. So we will uh, bring you some original content on there. The first thing you will notice is the list, bro, is going to become a YouTube exclusive. We will bring you the list, bro, uh, once a week, however, on YouTube, so you will not be missing out. You just won't get it on the actual podcast. But head over to YouTube.com, search for the Podcast Wrestling Society. Uh, And the more you subscribe, the more we can actually get our own custom URL. So make sure you do that. And uh, yeah, so that's first and foremost. We will be more formatted here. We have an actual schedule we've laid out. It is tentative for now. From now on, Kyle and I will not be bringing you the previews for pay-per-views on the podcast in fact those will become youtube exclusive as well but our fallout episodes after the the uh, pay-per-views and the shows that follow uh will be on the podcast so that will happen and greg and i are thinking of other fun stuff to bring you to the youtube uh, uh channel as well and we will focus more we'll have a more formatted thing after the news here on the on the podcast as well we'll try to uh, make the news more short and to the point, and we'll get to that. And uh, before we get in... We have more cowbell, too. I mean, that's that's coming. You know, Greg, I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more news, bro. How fitting that you uh, 
you do a New York accent, and we're going to yeah, – how fitting. Yeah. Let's leave with that. <laughs> well, for all of you that were entertained by last week's episode where it was all Russo, bro, in the WCW, we will bring you part dos today. That one was just for you, Greg. Uh, we will bring you part two today. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And, uh, yeah, and – we will. We're not going to wrap it up today. We'll, we'll we'll bring you at least this this uh, epicness in at least three parts, perhaps four. We're still working on that. Uh, it's we'll going to have to be. It's going to have to be quite a few parts. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah. multi. Yeah, it'll be multi-parted um, and all that. That's how that's how um, quote uh, great it is. No, oh, yeah, we're going to try to make the shows a little shorter, sweeter to the point. And all that. And if there's something you would like us to cover on the podcast, because we do have some ideas for upcoming episodes, and we're going to do, for each month, if there's something special that we want to cover, like an event, we will have certain events, uh, we'll do certain watch-alongs like previous episodes, and stuff like that. But uh, for now, you know, we we have some stuff in mind that I'll uh, update you all on at the end of the show. But real quick, before we get into the news, I want to let you know how you can advertise on the podcast. If you go to advertisecast.com forward slash podcast wrestling society, you can join the society by becoming a sponsor for the show. There you can hear the latest episodes, see our reach and show statistics, read about the show and about me. And of course, you can see our pricing options. We're accepting 10, 15, 30, and 60 second promos and commercials for whatever it is that you're selling, and we're giving the best rates possible for anyone interested. Now remember, just head over to advertisecast.com forward slash podcast wrestling society, and you can become a sponsor for this great podcast and help us continue to grow and grow, bro. The society thanks you. All right, and also... We want to let you know about our newest affiliation where we hooked up with WrestlingWithWrestling.com. We've been hooked up with and available on WrestlingWithWrestling.com now for a few weeks, and they're just a fantastic source for all wrestling fans. I'm telling you, if you want to keep up with the news that we don't get a chance to cover here on the podcast, they've got a section just for you. They also split up the news, reviews, and videos on pages specifically for WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan, and Ring of Honor, the indies here in America, and the indies abroad. They also have a section where you can see videos, hear interviews with today's and yesterday's hottest wrestlers and wrestling personalities, and hear other great podcasts like the Andre Corbeil Show, the Triple Threat Podcast with Shane Douglas, and many many more wrestling with wrestling.com covering all four corners of the ring all right now uh of course you know we also talk about um you know how you can buy our merch we got some great merch out there on rebel red but instead of getting into all that stuff and inundating you right out the gate i'll tell you all about that before our first promo break uh let's get into the news bro you uh you ready to dive head first into all of this yeah, I was waiting for a clever bro name, but okay, yeah. That's for the list, bro. Gosh. Yeah, I, but uh, well, I guess I can port some of it over to the news if it if you really it, I mean fan demand, I guess, but you know, I'll just I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to step up my brocabulary, but yeah, let's uh let's do some news, shall we? We'll start of course with WWE. Well, the big story out of WWE that I heard you and I heard about earlier today uh, as of the recording of this. For all of you listening, this happened back on Friday. Batista has been confirmed. He will be returning at SmackDown 1000 to reform Evolution with Triple H, Randy Orton, and Ric Flair. Man. I, uh, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, it's, I marked all over for that. Yeah. Good, good thing I was in the bathroom because uh, I had to... It was easier to clean up, yeah. but yeah, that was a, that was awfully, awfully awesome. Uh, I didn't, I don't know. Some people were, oh, all you marks that doubted it, you know, he was clearly always going to be there. I'm like, all right, if you say so. I mean, he, obviously he is going to be there, but I don't know. I thought it was a little up in the air for a while, so I'm glad it's confirmed. All I can say is, uh, 
you might want to watch out for that junk hand coming from Randy. So, but then again, you know, for all the hit him with your junk hand. Well, not for... everyone's gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone, you know, for for all the stuff we've heard about uh, about Batista all over the internet, maybe Randy should watch out for his junk hand. I don't know. <laughs> here's a here's a little story. I figured we'd just touch on this. Uh, this was. Uh, not, all right, let's uh, pull that back oh my a little bit. Anyway. Gosh. This is not dealing with this past Raw that just happened, but the, the week before, for all you listeners. Uh, a combination of network season premieres and a strong NFL game led Raw to what will undoubtedly be the lowest rated episode in its history. Uh, this was, again, two episodes ago. The raw rating is not available, but the total audience was 2.35 million viewers. The previous modern era low uh, uh, audience was 2.46 million viewers, set on July 9th. The September 26, 2016 raw, which went up against the Clinton-Trump debate, also did a 2.46 million viewers. So basically, I didn't think raw sucked. Like, I don't know. I didn't think. Uh, it was... What was the game? I think it was it was Chicago and Seattle, right? Uh, I don't understand how that was. I'm pretty sure it's what it was. Yeah, I probably you're probably right. I don't know. I just I didn't think Raw like extra special sucked that night or anything. I was like okay, whatever. Well, I mean that's just the live viewing. I'm sure like a lot more people saw it. So yeah, but still, that is. I mean, while ratings aren't a big deal nowadays, that is still pretty noteworthy. Uh, oh, according to Bruce Pritchard, what he said about DVR is those final ones don't come in for like a week. Right, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to factor in still. Yeah. I feel like I constantly say this, but... Yeah, it is true. And like I said, ratings aren't that big of a deal nowadays, but still, that is, you know, noteworthy-ish. So. Well, I mean, every time I see something like this, the next week it says rebounded with like three or something. It's like... Like plus I mean, threes or plus fours yeah, and stuff like that. Clearly, yeah. like, you know, it's just, you know... I didn't have time to watch it live. No, now I will. Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, this one's more of a rumor, I guess, but uh, people are f- kind of fired up about it one rumor way or another. Window. Yeah. A uh, report from Barn Burner's Fired Up podcast. Uh, don't listen to that. Listen to this. Uh, but anyway, they say that WWE is talking to Chris Cyborg about facing Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania 35. Uh, and it was wow. given a tiny bit more credence when Cyborg herself told ESPN's Ariel Helwani that she's been interested and teased an announcement. She might legit shoot on Ronda and kill her. Yeah, I know. They might not want to do that. Okay, here's my thing. What's what's the upside? Because I don't think she's going to, I don't think Cyborg's going to leave MMA and do wrestling full time. So what's... Oh, well, there's the- a rumor she's going to leave UFC after this next fight, but just a rumor. Why? Uh, I don't know. Contract thing, I think, or something. Good grief. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I don't really see a big upside in Chris Cyborg as a wrestler, but could be wrong. I don't know. She, I don't know. Hell, they got enough freaking uh, women coming over from MMA to, to do wrestling now. Like, I guess it's... Oh, well, okay. Here, here's a good question. Would would we rather have former MMA fighters coming over to be women's wrestlers or former swimsuit models coming over pretending to yeah, be wrestlers? Yeah, right. So I, I don't know. Two words: Kelly, Kelly. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and the Bellas. A tweet featuring Hulk Hogan from Turkey Al Sheikh. I think I pronounced that right. The chairman of the General Sports Authority in Saudi Arabia has many believing the reinstated Hall of Famer will appear at Crown Jewel in some capacity. Uh, Mm. So you never know. I mean, he flat out posted a picture uh, or excuse me, tweeted a picture of Hulk Hogan. So I don't know. And we know the uh, Saudi prince's love for people who are no longer wrestling. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think he keeps up with the product very much. No. Um, Bring I over mean, the not, WWF. I feel weird laughing about this stuff, but yeah. Bring over the WWF. We put the uh, we'll put we'll have rematch Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. <laughs> I didn't say it. Was that was that accent that I did? Was that impression considered racist I, or? I, I'm not touching it. I'm leaving that alone. Move on. I was gonna say Pritchard gets away with 
doing uh, Hispanic accents all the time and whatever. So I think I can get away with that. The send the, your hate tweets to. Never mind. <laughs> you know the you know the tag. The WWE UK show could be airing on Wednesdays on the network, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Further, Jim Smallman of the Progress Crew. Oh, what a, what a terrible name. Oh, man. <laughs> you had a little grief. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> and the Progress c- Crew could end up running the UK shows. Oh, man. Yeah, those would suck because Progress is terrible. <laughs> no, they're progressive. This is Progress. <laughs> That's what they chant, Greg. Therefore, I it know, is. dude. We were in Orlando. I'm like, um, is this like, are you saying that it sucks? This is progress. You're getting better. Is that what you're saying when you're chanting this? I just, I know. Like, you could chant that. <laughs> you could chant that at like any rookie. Like, that would be hilarious. Yeah. Like any, like chant that at the at the next uh, Velveteen Dream match. <laughs> like, yeah, right. He's progressing. He's doing well. While WWE is reporting Alexa Bliss is experiencing numbness in her arm and cannot compete, they are being kind of secretive about Sasha Banks' injury that's keeping her out. I haven't seen anything about what's wrong with Sasha, have you? No. She's got the plague, like before, when 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 uh, Bray Wyatt supposedly came in and spread the plague around the, <laughs> the uh, locker room. And you know it I was him. JoJo might have that plague. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, there's no timetable for Jason Jordan to return to the ring, and it's possible that his wrestling career is over. Insiders are saying that his neck was a lot worse than they thought it was going to be when it was first evaluated. That's <sighs> rough. Yeah. It goes back to what we said about we didn't like the guys, like, you know, we weren't super entertained by the guy, but we didn't want his career to be over. Like, no, I wanted this part of his career to be over. I wanted him to go back to American Alpha. Right, yeah. He needs to come out and save Chad Gable when uh, Bobby Roode inevitably beats the hell out of him. And what's taking so long, by the way? I know, I know. Like, man, this is a slow-ass burn. I mean, I'm glad they're not (laughs) jumping the gun, but still. Uh, WWE has been scouting Mexican indie star Bandito and is very interested in signing him. Well, that's that's if a certain hobo federation doesn't sign him. For all of you that don't know Bandito, uh, refer to the main event of All In. He teamed with Rey Mysterio and, was that Phoenix? Yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. So he was the third Mexican in the match. He was the third man! Oh my god, he's the third masked man! He's small, he's foreign, he wears a mask, bro. He's not relatable, bro. Gotta bury him. He's going to go to WWE and be gone from Mexico forever, bro. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of Phoenix, PW Insider notes that Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. are apparently locked into a Lucha Underground non-compete until 2020. So there is no chance of them headed to WWE until that's up. I know know someone has great attorneys that can get around that, but... Oh, yeah, all right. Stay tuned. Yeah, HCW has the best lawyers, all right. We have the best guys, the best people. Believe me. Huge. <laughs> Big league. Huge. All right. <sighs> oh, man. And this will morph into the next part of our news here. WWE and New Japan are both interested in signing indie big man Brody King, according to Wrestling Observer Radio. Do you know Brody he King? He already has a Brody. Yeah. Right. Do you know Brody King? I've heard of him. Sounds familiar. I can't... I'm not sure if I'm familiar with his work, though. Well... He's got the name Bro in his name, Bro. Sign Brody him. King. Oh, man. I can see him teaming up with uh, the King of Bros, Matt Riddle, <laughs> who made his debut at an NXT house show, by the way. Bro. 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 Weed. Bro. Bro. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. Bro is only the second most important thing to him when there's weed involved. All right. But anyway, the New Japan thing brings us into the second part of our news here. It is time for New Japan Pro Wrestling News. Got uh, got a couple stories here for y'all. Chris Jericho's return to New Japan is expected to come at November's Power Struggle show, where Evil will get an Intercontinental title shot. Now, uh, I mean, I like Evil, but okay. Whatever. 
That sounds bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mean. Uh, speaking of New Japan, by the way, before I get into this last story, apparently it wasn't just Gato that turned on uh, Okada. It was Gato and Jay White. So apparently he Gato is with Jay White now. I can tell you all, by the way, TJ messaged me during this and was heartbroken. I was a little bit, yeah. Uh, and then Okada. Like, you, know, you, you, you can't really tell someone's emotion by text, but I could just feel it. Yeah, you could feel the heartbreak. And then uh, the worst part is Okada may be a man without a country because he was talking the next day. Somebody was asking, it was like, so like, what happened? And he was like, well, the thing is, I don't know if I got turned on by Gato and he left Chaos or if they exiled me from Chaos. I'm just kind of winging it for now. <laughs> it's like, um... Might want to inform the fans what the hell is going on as well, because I'm a I'm a tad confused. But yeah, so that's happening. Uh, also, last story here: the Observer says that Yoshihashi has or was taken to the hospital after the New Japan Destruction in Kobe show. Uh, word is he is okay. Yeah, so uh, I like Yoshihashi, but apparently I'm like the guy, the one because I said something before about it people were i got kind of grilled on twitter they were like wow we found the yoshihashi fan i'm like uh, is that a thing I, I don't know i don't watch enough new japan to know but yeah whatever. i'm gonna say it is i I'm guess so yeah this is a shoot bro well speaking of a shoot bro let's get into your favorite portion of the news it is impact wrestling news we actually have a couple uh, of stories here. Before we start, this is this is funny. Um, last night, okay, uh-huh. my mom asked me. My mom asked me, "Hey, did you know uh, TNA is still on TV?" She goes, "It's on like a hundred channel, hundred and eleven." And it's like, "Who are these two? I said, "I have no clue." And she goes, "Who the hell lets this go on still?" <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? It was just, it was just funny, man. Just, well, like, well, I haven't watched it in like three years, so. Yeah, I I haven't watched really consistently. I felt bad, oh. so I just immediately hung up. <laughs> <laughs> just went to reevaluate my life. Oh man, yeah. I mean, apparently, from people who are actually still watching the product, they said this is one of the most entertaining periods in a long, long time for Impact. And uh, yeah, they've been trying to wheel and deal and talent, ex- you know, do some ch- talent exchanges and uh, sign some people. Well, you and... know, when you, when you have diarrhea and, you know, you, you don't have to go for a couple hours, it starts to feel entertaining and good, I guess. I don't know. What the hell? That's It feels entertaining when you don't have to poop for, like, okay. You know what I mean? It's like... That's a yeah, weird you gotta analogy. Keep, you got to keep getting up, but, like, eventually, oh, oh right, this my... is good, even though it's still there. Oh God. All right. Let's get into this. Oh, my God. All right. Um... It's 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 crap and it's TNA. I thought you would have put that together. Yeah, I get. Uh, God, speaking He's of that, tired, folks. Speaking of that, I, I no, thought I, I was the tired one usually during. No, this, I so. get it. It's just like, my God, I don't want it. I got it. Okay. We, yeah, the pe- the we we're sorry we offended the Impact Wrestling fan that we have listening. <laughs> I assume there's one. But I, <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, thank you fan, for fan director angry uh, hate tweet. At Pot Rest Society, I'll see it. Oh, screw you! Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I said I'll see it. Send it in crayon. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Abyss is being inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. So good for him. Yeah, because yeah, because that's you know that matters. Hey, whoa! This is a Hall of Fame. Okay, they get a watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a Casio or yeah. That limited edition pink watch from Iron Man three. I don't. They get they get the little the 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 uh, Hello Kitty watch. <laughs> yeah, limited. Edition. Did <laughs> they they bought it from one of the kiosks out? No, oh wait, no, that's right. They're not in Orlando anymore. My bad. You remember when we joked about that a couple of years ago? When I told I was like, I was like, what is the what is the guy getting or person getting inducted in the TNA Hall of Fame get a friggin' watch? Like they're retiring, mm. and they did. They got a watch, and I laughed so hard. Like, oh man! And then we kept joking because at the time they were in Universal Studios, and I was like, "Yeah, they got it from one of the from one of the merch places out in the park." Yeah. <laughs> got it for five bucks. It's got it's got a it's got a picture of like Cat in the Hat on it or something. Good grief! <sighs> well, and sticking you can't with... make this up. No. And why would you, you waste everyone's time? Yeah. 
You mean like the two hours that Impact Wrestling is? No, oh, never mind. Anyway, uh, moving on. More crap. <laughs> yeah, speaking of speaking of crap, like we were talking about, uh, going back to your point, Impact Wrestling viewership was down eleven percent last week. So you're telling me at one point it was up eleven <laughs> percent? I guess so, man. This is uh, <laughs> okay. That's a uh, a weird one. That's that for that. Um, last bit of wrestling news Thank we God. have. Uh, and I we, mean that literally. Thank you, God, that we're done with that. Uh, last uh, couple stories we have from the wrestling world. From elsewhere, bro. Uh, we can breeze through these pretty quickly. Uh, first one here is a little depressing. The bad boy. Skip it. Wow, the bad boy Joey Janela was injured during a match uh, a couple weekends ago, and it could put him out of action for quite a while. Apparently, he suffered multiple tears and legitimate damage to the knee. Or, that means he me, won't ligament. be at uh, he won't be at um, Joey Ryan's penis party. Oh my God! Real name, by the way. That's a real thing, folks. Yeah. New York WrestleMania weekend, Times Square. Be there, or don't be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, or don't. That that's always an option. Uh, but yeah, he suffered. I just uh, want to say one more time for emphasis: Joey Ryan's penis party. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in okay, penis. Okay, move on. Uh, move on. <laughs> he, uh, I. I I misspoke, by the way. Not legitimate damage, ligament damage. I can't read, apparently. So yeah, and I wrote this. So oh man, yeah. I mean that does suck, suck though. I mean yeah, but you know what? It's kind of like when uh, when uh, Buddy Murphy hurts himself, like, and he has to go home for a while. Like, is is he really hurting? You know, he gets he gets to go home to yeah, Alexa Bliss. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, he gets to go home to Alexa Bliss. Joey Janela gets to go home to that. Um, I I can't remember her name, but you know she's uh. She's a 10, uh, like Ty Dillinger. I'll just say that. Perfect 10, bro. Uh, last story here. I don't. I know the first promotion. Uh, DDT and WXW are coming to the U.S. for WrestleMania weekend. So if y'all are looking... Yeah. So if all of y'all are looking for some indie shows, WrestleMania weekend, you know, because there's not enough, you know, go see DDT and WXW, I guess. I'm going to the penis party. Hey, I got one more. Oh, my gosh. You know who else is probably going to be at the penis party is uh, not Randy Orton, but Naked Midian. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that would be the tiny I mean, penis. Uh, never mind. <laughs> well, he's got a fanny pack, though. Isn't it going to be cold in Times Square? Might be- I'm certain it's going to be damn near snowing. Yeah, so it, it might be a small. Trickage! Yeah, it might be a small party. <laughs> so, oh, I. <laughs> I guess room isn't going to be a problem. Oh, oh except when Jerry Ryan's there. I mean, you know. Yeah, he he's going to uh, be in the uh, gifted exception. All right, let's move on. My God. All right. Well, last uh, section of news here before we move on to the subject at hand. Let's uh, let's get into some UFC news. Now, the one story I think I'd heard about it, but you were the one that really I. I I don't know if I heard about it or not. That John Jones and Alexander Gustafson are official for UFC two twenty two thirty two. Not official yet, but it's probably going to happen. Mm. Yeah, John Jones still keeps taking pot shots at uh, Cormier. Oh man! I'll let him. He ain't getting them. He's, they're saving him for Brock. I really, really hope that Gustafson just puts Jones down and makes him look like weak without his. Uh, Performance enhancing, uh, you know, drugs. Oh, can we get this, please? Just please, can can Gustafson oh, just happen. stomp him out? I mean, the match is gonna happen. I mean, yeah. I just, I, I just want Gustafson to stomp him out, and it's, and just because I don't know. I mean, he may just be that good where he doesn't need it, but you know, we've seen this so many times in in MMA where as soon as someone keeps getting popped for you know something and they stop taking it, all of a sudden they suck. So I don't know. BJ Penn. Uh, 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 who was the other one? Uh, Almost be- he he f- tore Belfort. Yeah, that's it. Yep, that was the one I was thinking of. Uh, he was so good, and then he stopped taking whatever it was he was taking, and then uh, just boom, downward spiral. Elizu, I think that's how you say his name. Zelensky uh, calls out Robbie Lawler after his victorious knockout win at UFC Sao Paulo. And nobody knows who he is. He wants to make a name for himself. Yeah, so he calls That's out all. Robbie Lawler. Ugh, man, whatever. Doesn't wait. Oh, I'm thinking of Tom Lawler. Was it uh, that? Okay. Well, still, Tom Lawler's a wrestler now. Yeah, yeah. Because I was 
I was about to say, wasn't he just fired? And it's like, oh, wait, no, that's different Lawler. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, so, whatever. Oh, I want to make a name. That, that's, like, the thing. I'm just going to call somebody out. Like, all right, yeah, somebody that's never going to fight you because you're beneath them. All right, last story here. This one is actually a big deal. Uh, referee Herb Dean has been selected for the main event of UFC 229, Khabib versus McGregor. Right decision. Yeah, Herb Dean's probably the best referee they've got in the sport. Well, they right just now. need someone to step in immediately and stop the fight when it's over because one of them's going out. Oh, I yeah, I'm sure they are. If this goes to a decision, it's because they're both laying and praying or like they could both take like a hell. My question in all of this is, where's Steve Mazzagatti? <laughs> Who gives a crap? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we all we all remember how uh, Brock said he was going to smack his mustache off, and then, you know, oddly enough, next time we saw him, mustache was gone. Maybe Brock got his hands on him and uh, really got tore him in. Hands. Get these hands, boy. All right, well. <laughs> Uh, that's enough for the news, bro. Uh, I guess we're moving on to our subject at hand. But first, before we do that, uh, before we take our promo break, I do want to let you know about how you can pick up some great swag if you want to represent the podcast Wrestling Society in your everyday life. You just got to head on over to redbubble.com forward slash pod rest society. You can see our entire portfolio of artwork and you can get on some cool swag. There are two different logos for the podcast Wrestling Society that you can get on some sweet merch. We've got Greg's favorite official Naked Midian fan club president design. There's the brand new Randy Horton inspired hashtag junk hand out of nowhere. If you want to show support for Hobo Championship Wrestling, there's the official HCW logo. Hobos still rule. Hobo Mania running wild. A Dayton with Destiny event logo and Ramon's favorite, Hobo Effin Wrestling. You can get these and many more sweet designs on stickers, t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, clocks, phone cases, mugs, travel mugs, and much, much more. And if you want a piece of merch that you don't see available, hit us up on social media and we will remedy that situation. Again, it's redbubble.com forward slash pod rest society. That's P-O-D-W-R-E-S society. And you can get the look, bro. And now that I'm through shilling our stuff and uh, peddling our wares, uh, I will peddle somebody else's wares because we're going to take a quick break and let you know about another great podcast on the network that we are on. It's Drama City Productions. Definitely go to dramacityproductions.com to learn about these great podcasts and others out there, including this one. Be right back. Drama City Productions presets. Hey, it's Ben here, host of the Regular Stories Podcast, a podcast where I interview interesting people about their lives. These are not celebrities. They're not the elite. These are regular people, and these are their stories. You can follow us on Facebook at Regular Stories and on Instagram at Regular Stories. We are everywhere that you can get a podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, just about everywhere else. Look up Regular Stories Podcast. Drama City Productions.com. Bye bye, Blackbird. The last words spoken by bank robber John Dillinger, or were they? Here at Famous Last Words, we take a deeper look into the last thing famous or infamous people said in their final moments. You may know about the quotes, but now you'll understand what it really meant. Was it heartfelt, passionate, philosophical, or was it complete nonsense? Find us on Twitter at Last Words Show. Find our show on Podbean, Wooshka, and Anchor. Plus, wherever your ears enjoy podcasts. All right, y'all. We are back, and we are starting in with our subject at hand. It is WCW Nitro, The Russo Era, Part 2. And Greg has been so kind as to watch all of these Nitros and pay-per-views. To give us his 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 analysis, I I forgot to ask you. Did you actually watch this stuff when it was on? Yeah, oh, but man, so you're reliving um, it. Back then, though, um, I didn't have like DVR or anything, so like I would have to. I would. I always favored Raw, so at nine o'clock, 
So a lot of this I didn't see the second hour, and I just like looked at results. Oh, so. but you missed out on so much epic I hits, know. man. I know. I'm going Gosh. back now. I'm like kicking myself in the ass for it. It's because of you that they're out of business, Greg. <laughs> you didn't support them. This is true. I mean, the ratings went through my house, just like the Super Bowl ratings go through a certain house in Ohio. Oh, my anyway. gosh. Well, letting you, uh, letting you all know, not only this week are we going to be following along. Uh, I, I'm i following along. If you go to pwwew.net, uh, I am... Oh, Lord, it's a mouthful. I know. It's. I wish there was a way to shorten it, but there isn't. Anyway, uh, if you go there, you can see all the Nitro and Raw results. We are starting, because I can't remember, we, we left off somewhere in January in our last Yeah, well, he had, he had, well, yeah, because Russo was sent home, and where we're picking up is when he comes back. So, you you mean to tell me he was sent home after four months? No, three months, I think, no. Three. It yeah, well, was there all of uh, basically October, November, December, three months. Yeah. You know, well, and then part of January, so that's just like a couple. Uh, I think he was just there for like part of it. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, so he was there for three freaking months. Got sent, and then they brought his ass back. All right. Well. Well, they brought him back with Bischoff. Oh like, well. They brought him back together. Yeah, Bischoff. That was a, the huge point, turning point. Yeah. Well, Bischoff says he he's apologizing for not you know pulling it. Because basically he was he was basically supposed to be the babysitter for Russo, but he said he didn't he wanted to get along with Vince, so he didn't pull in the reins as much as he really should have, and he said he's kicking himself for it now. Um, oh, wh- why? Oh. Yeah, he he said he had the authority to shut stuff down if he wanted to, but he just never really exercised that authority. Well, respect for all- his authority. My God! For all of you that want to follow along, uh, we are also going to be telling you not only what went on at WCW Nitro each week, but also what was on the other channel on Raw. At the same time, we are oh. starting April tenth, two thousand. You want to know what the ratings were comparatively there, Greg? Yeah, April tenth. I'm interested because this was a uh, this was the reboot <sighs> night. So yeah, um, Raw doubled Nitro's ratings. Nitro oh. pulled in a three point one. Raw pulled in a 6.2. This was 2000, so I'm going to assume it was like about The Rock and Triple H. Uh, well, the main event on Raw this week was The Rock versus Bull Buchanan and Big Boss Man in a cage. That's a, that's a main event anywhere in the country. Man, we're getting it in early, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. But yeah, so but it wasn't just Bull Buchanan. It was Bull Buchanan and the Big Boss Man. So, I mean... That's, that's a two for one right there, man. Yep. The main about bang for your buck. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, the Nitro main event actually looks good on paper. It was DDP versus Sting. It was. They were at the Pe- uh, Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado. But uh, let's yeah. let's start there. All right. And going through this, by the way, I have a uh, a heel turn thing and a new champ, a new WCW champion counts. Because there's a lot, so. Wow. All right. That's not promising. I think we'll just do April. I got a lot of notes here, so we're just going to do maybe April. Let's see what we can do for April. Well, the first thing uh, I'm noticing just at a glance is there are, they're doing another tournament, bro. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Don't <laughs> worry. All right. Uh, so first note I have is uh, Bish, uh, Russo appears, and they hype it as the first time he's ever appeared on TV because he promised he never would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he comes out, and then this is one thing I know right off the bat. All of a sudden, they're talking like the way they're talking to Sid. He literally just turned heel like two weeks before, yeah. and all of a sudden, it's just forgotten about. <laughs> He's the world champion, and Bischoff's trying to get the title off of him, like physically, like give me the belt because you know they're vacating all the titles. Yeah. Um, two things I got out of this. Number one, I know it's just like you know a heel thing, whatever. And because this makes no sense to me, Bischoff says his biggest mistake in history was signing Hulk Hogan. Now he said that on air. Like a, yeah. Oh. Now even as like a heel thing, that literally gave him his job. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a that was a big thing. Better with that. And um, and then they just handed Jeff Jarrett a title shot. Well, of course, because he's the Cho Cho chosen one. Yeah. So why would this one wasn't real? This wasn't really a bad thing. I, I just wanted to mention it, and I have a feeling you'll get a kick out of it. Um, 
Tank Abbott's looking for a fight with Goldberg until he comes out. Until he comes back, he's going to beat up random people. And on this night, he targets Mark Man and beats the crap out of him, which I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Man. I loved watching. <laughs> there was no fast forwarding uh, there. But, you know, th- no. there's one thing I've got to I've got to stress is, you know, the, you know, we talked we made the cowbell reference a little early because if there's one thing that I need, it's more Tank Abbott. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, oddly enough, that's what set Russo home. Tank Abbott trying to make him the world champion. Yeah, and apparently they they were going to send Tank Abbott for singing lessons so that he could be a legitimate member of Three Count. So, not joking. You want to talk about missed opportunities, man. Holy crap. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, here's here's the first thing I, I, I called out to because they were pushing Billy Kidman to the moon and all of a sudden they just turn him heel and he's like feuding with Hogan. He calls out Hogan. Well, but like be- yeah. before this, oh, they were pushing him to the moon. It was great. Yeah. Because the internet and, said to, bro. Yep. So Hogan comes out, talks to him. Bischoff comes out and pretends he's on Hogan's side, cracks him with a chair, and then helps Kidman pin Hogan. So, yeah. Wow. First thing Russo does is have Kidman pin Hogan. Swerve, bro. <laughs> Later Holy in the night. Hell. Shane Douglas returns. This is going to be a theme, by the way. The announcers say, what's he doing here? He was released. No, he wasn't. <laughs> the entire revolution left. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, because the friggin, uh, the friggin radicals showed up. They Apparently, they were supposed to take Shane Douglas with them, and then they just went to WWE to sign their contracts and for, did not call Shane Douglas. Oops. Yeah, I don't think he would have had a job anyways. Um, oh, maybe. Next thing, this one really, like, well, I'm like, wow, this is happening. Uh, Sean Stasiak debuts, and he comes out with Mr. Perfect's WWE theme. Oh, you mean meat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Holy hell. Yeah. Uh, just so much so much wrong about what you just said and what I just said, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Ratings, bro. That, that yeah. pulled in that 3.1, bro. Well, yeah. Who wouldn't want to stay? You tune in to Nitro, you see Sean Stasiak walking out. Who's not going to stay to that? What do they got on the other channel? The Rock. Ooh. All right. We go. Okay. Um, next one. Not all this is going to be crap, by the way. I'm just like big moments, but a lot of it's crap. Uh, also, Mike Gossam debuts here. Um, oh, man. The Fat Chick Thriller. Oh, but you're getting way, way ahead. Uh, well, I know. We still got a whole crippling angle to go. Um, oh, yay. That sounds now, another, fantastic. Another thing, uh, they're giving guys huge, big, like big, huge pushes, and then decide, oh, they're going to turn heel and for no reason. <laughs> and they do that with Vampiro here. Um, Vampiro. He turns, on Sting, he turns on Sting, <laughs> who he was just teaming with, and after watching for a while, no explanation is really ever given. He just does it. He just turns on him and... <laughs> well, because he had to set him on fire, bro. Again, you're getting way ahead. Oh, I know, but it's leading to that. That's why he turned. It's it's way off in the distance, though. Ah, you got man. a long way to go. You you can see the we crap still, from here. We still got a we still got a bloodbath and him being noosed and all that. You got we got a lot of ways to go. Hold on. I don't know okay, why uh, when you, <laughs> I don't know why when you first started saying uh, bloodbath and him being new, I thought you were going nude, but. Uh, I forgot we're not talking. No, but that's that's right up Russo's alley, though. And we're not we're not talking about uh, one half of Southern Justice. <laughs> yeah. And the show ends with uh, Bret Hart staring down Bischoff and Russo. This will lead to a small thing, and then he'll be gone forever, bro. Oh like, man! It'll lead to something real small. All right. Um. That's what she's. Uh, never mind. Uh, go on. Well, I hope not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here we go. We're uh, I'm on a Spring Stampede. This all happened right before pay per view, by the way. Spring Stampede's full of tournaments, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> bro. Right off the bat, this match. I forgot this match actually happened. Oh my god. Well, you know how I... epic the show is when the the cover. Sorry to cut you off, but the cover photo for this this pay per view, Jeff Jarrett's front and center. And yep. in the back right corner, it's the wall, bro. Well, hey, they're they're doing big stuff with him at the at the moment, but don't worry, <laughs> that's going to come to a screeching halt. Uh, 
Uh, they were doing some they were doing some massive stuff with him like he was becoming like a major heel it was good man he was not that bad but uh, again he gets ruined so this match actually happened jimmy hart versus uh uh chicago dj man cow this match happened with al roker jr turd the bartender and freak this is uh, his, <laughs> his his this is his his hour stern whack pack that was oh god <laughs> Who would come in later, by the way. We will get to that probably in part three. Oh, man. You know. <laughs> uh, Hogan's chasing around Bischoff in the back, and they actually mm. have cops pull guns on Hogan. Oh, man. This happened. <laughs> oh, man. You thought Pillman having a gun was bad, but you see eight <laughs> cops pointing guns at Hulk Hogan, man. Holy crap. Put them down, oh, brother. <laughs> Look, I said it was the gun show, but not those guns, brother. Next thing, uh, Chronic debuts. Lots oh, of weed jokes. Yes. Uh, lots of weed jokes. Well, of course. Uh, so it's, why wouldn't there be? It's freaking uh, doofus. Anyway, <laughs> Russo. That's his name. Couldn't even remember his damn name. For a moment there, you were lucky. They help uh, Buff Bagwell and Shane Douglas beat Ric Flair and Lex Luger. <laughs> and they become tag champs. It's just... <sighs> It's significant to me because they're talking about new blood and we're talking about two guys who really start wrestling in the late 80s. <laughs> so and I'm, not, I'm not talking about Flair and Luger, by the way. I'm talking about Buff and, and Shane Douglas. Yeah. I, oh, well, new, new blood. Okay. There yeah. were a lot of people in the new blood that didn't exactly fit. Yeah. Uh, some of the most noteworthy. We'll that. At a glance, Jeff some of the Garrett. most noteworthy noteworthy things I'm seeing about this uh, about this show, the only match that went above nine minutes was the main event. Yeah, uh, they were all tournament matches, bro. So they had to get them out quick. If yeah, you yeah. go to the network, by the way, there's like there's like 47 chapters to skip through. <laughs> Holy hell! And uh, the other thing I'm seeing about this is uh, Terry Funk defeated Norman Smiley. For the WCW Hardcore title. Now, now I told you I was going to cover thing. the crap, and I'll be honest, that that was fun to watch. There's a lot of that, and yeah. Well, um, I'm also it seeing... Was, it was fun. I'm not going to lie. I mean, stupid as it was, at least it was fun, so... Well, I'm also seeing Chris Candido with Tammy Lynn Sitch, which I, I didn't even know she was in WCW, so there's, there's They just thing. called her Tammy, but yeah. She, uh, they defeated, or excuse me, he defeated uh, The Artist... Uh, with Paisley. The artist formerly known as Prince Ayaka. Yeah. And uh, Juventud Guerrera, Shannon Moore with Shane Helms, Lash LaRue, and Crowbar with Daphne in a six-way match for the Cruiserweight title. Man, what a motley crew. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen worse matches, I'll say that. That's the best I can say. You know, I, um, for as much as uh, I laugh at the artist formerly known as Prince Ayakea, uh... I mean, he did get a push, and he was given the cruiserweight title yeah, at one point. Right. So He's not a bad wrestler either. So I got to point that out. And then right after that gimmick left, so did his career. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think he just dropped down to the artist after a while too. Did you know that his father was King Iakea? Who was the the one of the leaders of the Dungeon of Doom? I heard it was his named after him. No, it was his legit dad. Like, uh Man. Oh, no wonder why he got Engine Doom was on fire, man. Well, hell yeah. Everybody, uh, if you don't know King, <laughs> if nobody knows King Iakea, look him up. If you know anything about the Dungeon of Doom, he was the fat guy that sat on a, like a, I guess, a throne, whatever. And he had like Put it a, on the list, bro. We're going to cover a Dungeon of Doom. We're going to do a Dungeon of Doom episode. Put that on the oh, list. Oh, yes. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Anyway. And, uh, so my main note here is uh, Big Heel Turn. Mm. Swerve, bro. Uh, Kimberly turns on DDP, helps Jarrett win the world title. For like a 500th time. Yeah. No, she never turned on him. This is only well, like, he okay, turned he on her, turned on right? her gave yeah. her up, but yeah. But like, this was like a legit heel turn this time. Well, And um, this world is... t- new, new world champ count under Russo is at one so far. So. Well, and this is before the final heel turn of, of uh, Kimberly on DDP where she filed for divorce, but that's, <laughs> that's coming later. I just passed that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look man. for that part two. Oh, hooray. All uh, right. Here we go. April 17th. All right. You, uh, is, uh, the ratings. 
got even worse, bro. WCW pulled in a, Nitro pulled in a 2.5. Raw pulled in a 6.7. About three times the ratings, bro. Uh, Raw, uh, the main event was Triple H, the Road Dog, and X Pac versus Chris Jericho and the Acolytes. Oh, I remember that. That was uh, the night. I think that was the night Jericho quote won the world title and then didn't had to give it back. <laughs> That was a big night because that was the first thing they saw in Raw. Yeah, that was that was big, bro. Uh, the main event we're seeing on Nitro, WCW World Heavyweight Champion, the Chocho Chosen One, Jeff Jarrett versus the WCW US Champion, Big Papa Dump, Scott Steiner. We're gonna get to that because I have a note on that. I'm just <laughs> oh, hooray! <laughs> in the first, it's not that bad actually. It just it's. Uh... All right, it I was just gonna say is. now since you already since you already mentioned it, I was gonna mention it now. Uh, my question is why they're both a new blood. So what happens is Jarrett puts a contract on his door. It says I'm facing anybody. Someone sign it. The camera uh, sees someone's hand sign it, and all of a sudden it's Scott Steiner. I'm like, why? To- like you just established this whole thing is like the whole <laughs> thing. All of a sudden they're fighting one another. <sighs> oh, okay. Swerve, there we go. bro. First swerve thing I want to for the sake of first swerve. Thing <laughs> First thing I'm going to point out, this is not really a Russo thing. I just found it funny. Uh, a young Cody Rhodes is part of Russo and Bischoff's security. Wait, did you say a young Cody Rhodes? Yes. He's like 18 or so in this. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> he's part of R&B security. Wow. Uh, well, do not tweet Cody Rhodes and say anything to him about this because I don't want to hear about that he killed himself. <laughs> Uh, I've probably made a couple of bucks because daddy was there. Okay. Uh, first thing I got to mention right off the bat in the opening promo, because you just mentioned Tammy Lynn Sitch. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> um, I forget who off the top of my head. I think it was uh, it was Bishop. No, it was Russo, I think. They say, I told you all that sunny days were ahead, and they had to what drop the that. Do you oh. remember that promo with Brett and, and Shawn Michaels? Yes. Of course, they had to visit that. Oh, yeah. Let's reference everything from WWE. Like where you said Sean Stasiak was coming out to Mr. Perfect's theme. Well, he took on Mr. Perfect, and Stasiak's new name is The Perfect One. Yeah, and he says he's absolutely perfect while pointing at his abs. Oh, man. That's a <laughs> that's a real winner. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, man. Crap on a stick. Um. <laughs> Next up, we got a we got another swerve, bro. We got a face turn, bro. Oh yeah, so we're up to Chronic. what are we up to now? <laughs> Two, three. Uh, that's at least well, three or four. That's that's four turns now. Oh, um, man. You can count at home, people. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, Chronic is face, and they're beating the hell out of the Harris brothers. Why are they face already? They just debuted as heels. Ah, I... <laughs> uh, your guess is as good as mine, man. Ah, <sighs> man. This next one, this one, just I think you and I have talked about this before. So Vampiro says he'll destroy Sting, and I put why. And again, I'm questioning why. He never gives a freaking response. I want you to feel my misery and my pain. What the hell? Well, No context. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Greg, the whole thing was just dropped like a few months later. So with, with absolutely no wrap up. So there yeah. you go. Starts oh, with no, it starts with nothing, ends with nothing. Boom! That's that's a perfect Russo angle, bro. Um, the Book part we were talking about, though, the part we were talking, <laughs> uh, the part we were talking about before, though, this is the episode where Sting repels from the rafters, and this is obviously after Owen's death. So yeah. Russo still doing this, and yeah. remember, Sting hadn't done this at all until now, from that from that moment on. So. It's like, wow, dude. Well, I guess they did ask Sting about it, and uh, and this. Well, is I mean, the- it's not. It's not even so much that. It's just like, wow, Russo, really, you're trying to get away from that, and you bring it back. Yeah, uh, I will say this. Uh, I guess they were talking about. I can't remember. I want to say it was 83 weeks, uh, but it might have been a different podcast. Uh, somebody was talking about it, and they said, and this is the weird part. They said WCW had more professional rigors than WWF did. They said WWF just grabbed some guy that 
Well, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Sting did it nightly, where Owen Hart did it like once or twice. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, they said they didn't have anybody who really was like super good about that and had great equipment, which is evident by what happened. And I'm not making light of it. I'm just stating facts. But they said uh, they they had like the best, like they had like actual stunt guys who knew what the hell they were doing and tested yeah. it out themselves, do it for Sting. So they said he was never in any danger. But they said he did have a fear of heights at first, but he got over it after a while. Uh, man, that's rough. I don't know if I even could. <laughs> Hell no. This next one. This one starts to like blur the lines here. So Mike Awesome debuted the week before Nash was on crutches, and Awesome took the crutch and beat the hell out of him. And like Nash has got a da- uh, damaged knee. All of a sudden, Nash returns, runs in, no crutches whatsoever. He's walking fine, running fine. And he was just on crutches, like with a bad knee the week before, like after getting over surgery. Nobody remembers, bro. Drop it. <laughs> that was a week ago, bro. <laughs> Nobody remembers that far back, bro. Drop it. And then uh, this one was unique. So Tank Abbott's doing his whole Goldberg's not coming. I'm going to beat up somebody. Mark Man literally runs into the crowd away from him. So Look. Tank almost. Take pulls some guy out of the crowd, almost beats him up. It turns out to be the Chicago Blackhawks owner. What the F? And then, like, some Chicago Blackhawk uh, guy uh, gets in the ring, and Mark Men's like, putting him over heavy. Go, oh, man, this is the toughest guy in the NHL. I'm like, who the hell is this? Well, he wasn't the owner. I guess he's a, a player for the Blackhawks. But, yeah. No, the least... guy he almost beat up was the owner. Oh, the player okay. saved him. Uh, well, if he's not the guy that... CM Punk modeled his look after. I don't care. (laughs) This next one, this was like pretty much uh, attempted murder. So like Hogan (laughs) is fighting with (laughs) Hogan's fighting with (laughs) kid. What's what's a Russo show without some attempted murder? (laughs) Uh, Hogan's beating the hell out of Kidman in the back. And then I guess he throws Kidman like a huge trash can, like a huge industrial one. And then Hogan gets in like a Hummer and just rams the hell out of the trash can. What? And like everyone's saying, Kidman's dead. That's it. He's dead. Oh, it's over, folks. He's dead. <laughs> Man, that would only be the first of two times within a few years that he would attempt yeah. murder with a large vehicle. Yeah, right. Think about that. <laughs> so, yeah, that wraps that wraps up. And then the Scott Steiner Jarrett thing, which we already covered at the beginning. Right. Well, then I guess that about wraps it up for April 17th. Moving on to the 24th here. The ratings, uh, well, I guess they they improved for both shows on the 24th, which is weird. Nitro saw 3.1, which is still not great, but it's, you know, better than it was the week before. But Raw went up to a 7.1, more than doubled the Nitro ratings. Yeesh. And the next week is even worse in May. But um, the main event on oh, Raw. Oh, there's a freaking reason for that. We'll get to that. Trust yeah. me. There's a huge, huge, huge reason. Uh, well, the main event on Raw is, uh, and I didn't read the description. I don't remember the show. You might remember better than I do. Uh, the Rock and Chris Jericho versus Triple H and Shane McMahon. Uh, oh, they crossed out Shane McMahon and... I guess his replacement was Chris Benoit with referee Shane McMahon. That's a hell of a change. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I couldn't compete with that. Yeah, Chris Jericho and The Jeez. Rock came out for the main event, followed by Triple H. Just when it appeared that the game would have to go it alone, he introduced his tag team partner, Chris Benoit. So what the hell was going on on Raw? And he announced the special guest referee for the match, Shane McMahon. So, was Chris Benoit heel at this point? What? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, he was part of the Radicals, I think, at that point, right? Yep. Um, yeah. Okay, well, the main event on Nitro was Vampiro versus Sting in a first blood match. Oh, it gets great. Let's start off with the beginning, and this might give away why Nitro sucks the next week. <laughs> we oh, get man. the debut of David Arquette on Nitro. Oh, man. I, I'm seeing at the top, it says, when Ready to Rumble producers designed the film's devastating triple cage, they wanted to make the apparatus as fantastic as possible. Little did DDP and Jeff Jarrett realize this killer contraption would invade their real lives. 
What the F? Hold on. It's going to happen. <laughs> so they announced that for uh, Slambury. So that match. First note I have here, Chronic beats Lex Luger and Flair. Keep in mind, they're all faces. And now they're facing the faces as heels. <laughs> <laughs> um, My head and hurts. then they proceed. They proceed to then turn on Buff Bagwell and Shane Douglas, even though they had turned on the week before. But like, oh my god, they're turning on them! They just did it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I mean, I'm, they didn't turn on Douglas and Shane, but they turned on Harris Brothers. But yeah, they turned they're. On. <sighs> well, first of all, is that five? Uh, yeah. Okay, for those of you keeping. Uh, of keeping tabs at home. And I'm seeing they call themselves Team Package. Yes. Well, number one, Team Package. <laughs> Had to be said. Uh, number two... Sweaty package. Wow. Number two, why? Were because, they... just because. Also, he's not like Sligar at this point. He's just the total package. Yeah, he and has been for there was a, a thing where he was beating up people if they even mentioned the word Lex or Luger, so... Yeah, that was why? before Russo. This was not a Russo thing, to be fair. So yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Check out this match, dude. I, I don't know how Nitro did bad this night. David Arquette versus Eric Bischoff. <sighs> oh, this is a real match. Yeah. And in it, David Arquette does the worm. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Look, I know we've said this before and we abused hell out of it in the last show, but it has to be said again. Asses in seats, bro. Yep. I'll give you one better. Main event anywhere in the country. <laughs> anywhere in the world, bro. Man, this is just a fan. This is WrestleMania 3 big, man. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the, the Mega Powers exploding had nothing on this. All right? <laughs> uh, uh, this, hap- this is not the main event, by the way. This happens before the main event. DDP beats Jeff Jarrett in a cage thanks to uh, a lot of interference from, like, everybody. Mike Awesome gets involved, and then Chris Canyon randomly appears and stops him, and the referee goes, one, two, looks up, sees interference, and then sides up, three, DDP wins. So, yeah, there was that. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) He literally pauses for, like, three seconds and then hits the third count. (laughs) Awesome. And we were at... New world champ count two. Uh, I am seeing Tink Abbott came out and beat up somebody from WCW.com. Yes, I forgot to write that down. It was actually Bob Ryder, one of the guys who helped create TNA, and someone came in to help him and jumped on Tink Abbott's back, and Bill it turned Banks. out to be Jeremy Borash. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I see uh, Jeremy Borash actually tried to make the save with a vicious piggyback. Tink yeah. responded by crushing Borash like a bug. And then WCW.com's Bill Banks also suffered several stiff shots when he came to aid uh when he came to the aid of Ryder in the ring. Yeah. Whoo, man. <laughs> Been a good night, that's, Tater. That's that's money right there, dude. That's we're, yeah. we're also seeing Buff Bagwell and Shane Douglas take on and defeat Chronic. It wasn't a bad match, actually, so I thought that was pretty decent. Why was Pr- Chronic in two matches in one night, losing both times? That was that was their thing. They uh, they started becoming like, like, like uh, we don't give a crap, we're going to beat up everybody kind of thing. So. And they didn't because they lost twice in the same night, but all right. <laughs> um, and Hogan... Hey, hey, they tried. And Hogan lost a handicap match to Mike Awesome and Kidman. Yeah, it was a bunch of shenanigans. I don't think he really lost. I think they just said he lost. Yeah. But again, I'm just going with the absolute crap when I do this, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, well, the main... The, let's you, check out the main event, though, dude. Oh, want, yeah. You want me to run down what this says, and then you kind of fill in the blanks? Yep. Uh, the fans knew that this match would be grueling, but no one expected Vampiro to truly call upon his powers of darkness. Man, oh, they're, get, God. they're getting dramatic here. Sting dropped from the rafters, and after treating Vampiro to a solid beating, the Dark Angel was drenched in a red liquid from the sky. He got bloodbathed like uh, Gangrel. 
Uh, Vampiro then called in the new blood. Bischoff and Russo's selection of new superstars attacked Sting to his repelling, or, or excuse me, attached Sting to his repelling wire and hung the battered warrior over the fans. I remember this. And he was like dripping blood while mm-hmm. hanging there. That's I, how Nitro went off the air. And yep. I remember uh, before the, the blood dropped, Vampiro like did some like throat cut motion and blood just like poured down on him. And then Sting could like, he couldn't stand up because he kept slipping in the blood or, you know, excuse me, red liquid. But yeah. So this match didn't really get going. It just, it was a quick beating. Uh, it was that. a segment, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hachi Let's Machi. get to, I had never, no, Thunder because they're not on the network at, at this up to this point. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna make references to stuff I read. Mm-hmm. This is the only thing that matters about this Thunder. David Arquette wins the world title. David Arquetti, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I wrote David Arquetti in my notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't get it, uh, obviously we know how to say his name properly because we already have, but. Uh, there's a guy we knew that said David Arquetti, and when we laughed every time he said it, and he didn't get why. And when I asked Greg, should I tell him? He was like, nope, let it go. I still wonder if he does it. Oh, I um, guarantee he does. Well, that was yeah, a his- uh, the most historic talked about thunder in history, and I'm not being facetious. It's it's funny. I, I messaged you and Ramon the same day, and I'm like, I'm on the mo- the moment. And you both went straight to Bash the Beach 2000. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Like, well, that to is to me. This is the moment that killed WCW, but I just love how you both went straight to that, which is telling. Yeah. Like, well, this you know, one, I, this it, is like a thing. Like, which one of us is right? Is it you two or me? Which one of these is the moment? Well, I will say Eric Bischoff <laughs> did say on his podcast, and and he was like, while that was stupid, and while it was not great, or whatever, at least it meant something. It tied into a freaking movie that they were trying to promote. And he was the star of said movie and all this other stuff. And it had, you know, some ramifications to it. It meant something. But there were other things that went on, like what they were talking about was Russo winning the world title. That meant nothing and had no reason behind it. It was just crap for the sake of crap. At least this, while it was crap, had a, a meaning to it. No matter how misguided it was. Well, it's going to get even better. So May 1st. Before we we move on to May, let's take our final break here. (laughs) And uh, when we come back, we will cover May, Mm. or at least most of it, from the Russo era. This one looks bad. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break, let you know about some other great podcasts here on Drama City Productions Podcast Network. When we come back, more greatness it, well, whatever. More yeah, comedy. We'll call it that. More comedy, bro. Drama. Drama. City. Yo. Check it. Uh. Chino's Hip Hop Stop. Yo, check us up on Twitter. Everybody knows that the position. You listen on Twitter. The jitter. Everybody can hear the picture. We spitting it down and putting the rhymes like scriptures. Everybody knows when you get down with the show. And all your major podcasts listen in form. So applications or any form of media. Come step to us with a number one competitor. Drama, Drama City, City Small Town Mentality Podcast with your host, Ben. A podcast about nothing and everything. A podcast where we get together with friends, drink beer, and see where the conversation takes us. We don't edit. We don't care what people say. It's small town people with a small town mentality. It gets offensive at times. Lots of swearing and a whole lot of not caring. Available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at STM Pod, on Instagram at STM Podcast, and on Facebook at Small Town Mentality Pod. We'll see you there. And we are back, oh, diving in with both feet, just plugging our nose. Let's go right into May, shall we? You want to know the ratings for this week? This has got to be a, a huge one, dude. They were a cat's debuting as world champion. 
This is at yeah, least well, a nine point five. Apparently, apparently the word got out. Uh, Nitro pulled in a two point <laughs> five, and Raw pulled in a seven point four. Holy crap! They about tripled it. Holy God! Um, May first, by the way, on Raw. The main event was The Rock versus Shane McMahon in a cage. Hmm. So, well, that's that. not going to beat this. So, right off the bat, uh, you see David Arquette sitting with the world title on the set of his new movie, which they're plugging the hell out of. It's uh, Miles the Graceland, and what? you see Courtney Cox with them saying, "You know, you're not a wrestler." And he's like, "Yes, I am. I'm the champ," and all this. Literally, in the next segment, he's walking through the halls, scared like a little puppy. Begging and pleading to give DDP the title back. Like, they literally go from that to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dang, too bad this, you know, this was so earlier, you know, he could have been plugging such great films that he was in, such as, uh, you know, C-Spot Run. Yep. Man, it just, it came too soon. Let's, my God, what what did come out around there? Oh, he, he could have been plugging Scream 3. That one actually wasn't too bad, so... I like how in the same year that he was in Scream 3, he was also in that god-awful Ready to Rumble. Yeah, right. Oh, it's like, well, he get one good and one suck. <laughs> and then everything else is suck, too. Don't forget. Next thing we see is uh, uh, Sean Stasiak doing Mr. Perfect's old free throw thing. And oh, my God. Basically just mocking the whole thing and saying how absolutely perfect he is. <sighs> yeah. Later on, like Mr. Perfect would attack or heard anyone would attack him, and it was a throwaway. It was stupid, but you know. Well, you next. Know, yeah, next. I don't know how they didn't pull off a higher rating in the night. Where, <laughs> well, because the the next match that I'm seeing is a table match between the Wall and Horace Hogan. <laughs> no, the Dude, Hogan. That was money. Main event, oh, we, we can't say it enough, main event anywhere in the world, asses in seats, bro. <laughs> and yeah. they were in they were in Birmingham, Alabama. Man, I wonder if Con, uh, Conrad was there. <laughs> Front <Roll> and <laughs> center. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Um, oh. I'm also seeing a three-way dance after that. Hugh yeah, Morris, my... Hugh Morris, yeah. Scott Steiner, and Jeff Jarrett. First, the first things first. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Second of all, that one of these things it's not like the other. Won. He flipping won. Hugh Morris won the match. Well, here's why: because it's like Steiner had him in the Steiner recliner, and for some reason Jarrett hits him with the guitar. I don't know why. I, don't, I think like they. they Got into an argument or something. So this Ugh. is basically eradicating him from the new blood. So, yeah. So I I guess that's a face turn. I don't know. I just, uh, for uh, who? Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Which one is the bad guy here? I don't uh, know things. Blurring the lines, bro. That's number six. Uh, or seven. Yeah. My seven. next note. My next note is uh, Russo walks out. With Liz on a leash. Oh, real story. Man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he t- he said he owns her now. He took the contract from Luger of hers on Thunder. Put her on a so leash, yeah. bro. Put a woman on a leash. Why not? Put her <sighs> in the uh, put her on a leash, bro. And then and then send her off into the kitchen, bro. <laughs> I'm not uh, saying that as myself. That's something he would say. Yes, I'm mocking him because he's very sexist. Next thing, Sting versus Vampiro in a graveyard. Uh, it's yeah. a thing, by the way, because Vampiro, as you know, later on won the match, which we actually reviewed. It's in the archives. I yeah, check out. out the archives now. It's the Vampiro Watch Along episode. I don't know the exact date, but it was, uh, I, I it believe. Was Bash the Beach 2000, I believe. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, they, the date of the episode, I believe, that aired SummerSlam week. So that would have been the 20, I want to say the 23rd of August that that episode aired. So for all of y'all out there wanting it, it's there. It is also up on our YouTube page, so definitely go check it out. Like and subscribe, y'all. Uh, so Vampiro knocks Sting into the grave and buries him with some 
dirt from a wheelbarrow. It doesn't actually bury them, but like they put it over like, oh my God, they're bees burying them alive. What are you he doing? Dumps, like, burying you. Dumps, he dumps, yeah, right. <laughs> he dumps a pile of dirt on them. They call that buried. And then at the end, Sting's hand pops out of the grave and Mark Mann starts yelling, he's alive. And I'm like, that sounds uh, oddly familiar. Like <laughs> I've seen that before somewhere. No one will remember the undertaker, bro. <laughs> no one will remember he pulled the carry, bro. Do it yourself. Yeah. Do it, Sting. Um, oh, God. Like, seriously? And, I'm still alive. Uh, Shut up. You're waking the neighbors. <laughs> Next, uh, Rey Mysterio and Conan return. Announcers claim they left WCW. No, they didn't. Did they? <laughs> no. When? <laughs> This is like a thing. Whenever someone returns, they haven't seen them. They left. They were gone. No, it, they weren't. It's a right. shoot, bro. <laughs> I guess uh, they're heels now. Uh, Sure. Spoiler alert for a couple of weeks ahead. Uh, their faces really quickly after this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So does this count as a turn or? I, I don't think so. I think they just return. That's how they are. It's so. just a thing. But they were yeah. they were kind of like on the fence as a face healing quote left uh next one i put uh when st- all of a sudden like vampire is in the ring i forget what's going on maybe you can tell me i didn't write that part but sting repels from the rafters and beats him up I'm like that's awfully fast seems they just had a match in a cemetery a couple segments ago <laughs> uh <laughs> scrolling through here uh i'm seeing some this lovely crap. Tank Abbott defeats DDP with some help from Jeff Jarrett. Those are words that I spoke. Um, no contest. Vince Russo versus the total package. Again, these are words that came out of my mouth. Uh, Russo handed Liz the bat, telling her to finish off the package. Giggity. She clobbered Vinny Rue with the bat and ran to the dressing room. Chronic hit the ring and took out the entire security team until they were maced by the Birmingham police. Man, that was quick. Oh my Security God. team, by the way, was made up of Cody Rhodes, Quee Wee, and <laughs> primetime Elix <Elick> Skipper. <laughs> my God. That's like the new shield, bro. That was the shield before the shield. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not seeing the, the Sting and Vampiro thing here. It might be later on. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Uh, Vampiro (laughs) said he is Sting's anti-hero and the freak that he should have been. The arena went dark and Stinger dropped from the ceiling with a bat in hand, ready to finish the fight. He beat on the he beat on the Dark Angel with the uh, with the bat several times before leaving the ring. Backstage, we go back to Russo storming into the women's dressing room. Liz slaps him across the face, telling him that he didn't own her. Like, are are um, these things? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, um, dang. Show ends with Hogan getting a bloodbath. Uh, I was. I'm, like, Why? Trying because he was wrestling Vampiro, I believe, right? Or there's something. No, he was Vampiro. wrestling. He was wrestling Mike Awesome. Yeah, but then Vampiro gets involved. I think. From the sky, a bloodbath dropped again, covering and, yeah, Hogan in the crimson red. That's my thing. I'm like, is it a Vampiro thing or is it a new blood thing? I can't figure it out. What is it? Okay, here's I the just. Th- Here's the thing that I get. I guess there was a new blood thing. But awesome and Hogan fought all over with the new blood members getting the advantage. Hogan, who said he wasn't Hogan anymore, he was Terry Balea through the yep, rule book. They announce him as that. He comes out as that. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. It's a shoot, bro. Uh, through the rule book out the window using a chair and his weight belt as a weapon. Hogan defeated a, a or excuse me, delivered a belly to back suplex on the floor. Awesome gained control using a steel chair on the Hulkster. Kidman came out with a chair, but it was stopped by Hogan. Billy came off of the top rope to the floor with a chair over Hogan's head, busting the former champion wide open. Back inside, Awesome covered Hogan for the three count. When Hogan got up and saw the blood, he started swinging the chair, hitting everyone in sight, including the referee. From the sky, a bloodbath dropped again, covering Hogan in crimson red. The new blood members hit the ring and attacked as Nitro went off the air. My... God, these are words that came out of my mouth. I just, I'm amazed yeah. with every sentence. Man, talk about overbooking the hell out of something. <laughs> oh, man. 
All right. Well, that was um, that was something. That was, that was May first in Birmingham, Alabama. Bama. Roll um, Tide. Yeah. No, I do not second that at all. So Ramon Wood, he loves Alabama. Oh, yeah. He's gonna kill you when he hears this. All well, right. This is how I'll know if you listen or not. <laughs> <laughs> You're gauging it again. All right. Well, that takes us to the amazing Slambury. From May seventh. But 7th. thunder real quick. Oh, that's, this is that's right. This okay. is uh, this is something here. So, right. um, thunder. <laughs> all matches are under New York rules, bro. Bro. All, so it's no DQ, no count out, and there's no refs. The ref, the wrestlers count their own falls. What the hell is that? <laughs> What's to stop them from you doing a lightning fast count? You can't make this up, dude. Uh, <laughs> the hell. Oh man, there's some crap in there, but I'll pass over all that. Again, I didn't get to see it. I just took notes. Uh, I, it's a, a Misfits in Action debut here. Oh, that's hell a hell yeah. of a that's a hell of a team right there. General Hugh G. Rection. <laughs> Nuff said. Oh yeah, don't even need to uh, cover the rest of them. So it's uh, much. Uh, there's a huge battle royal, uh-huh. and the winner gets a shot at the Great American Bash. Like Macho Man makes a surprise return. Hmm. Like huge hype, man. They're like, oh my God, everyone's going crazy. Yo, I can tell sh- you for a fact that I'm <laughs> big leg. I can tell you for a fact that we never see him in WCW again after this one appearance. Oh, so, man. Yeah. There you go. Oh, well. So that brings the question why is he back? Anyways, <laughs> Ric Flair wins the Battle Royal. He's going to the Grand American Bash. Or is he? We'll cover that. Or is he? This took place on Thunder? Stay tuned. Yeah. Wow. That's actually kind of a big match for Thunder. But all right. Well, Arusa did like a whole promo a few weeks back on um, Nitro. And he's like, we're going to make Thunder fun again. It's going to matter and all this stuff. Oh, man. He was the one who started that. <laughs> we're going to make yeah. Thunder great again, bro. And in not, not so many words, he basically said it's not going to be a jobber show anymore. So there you go. Wow. Well, breaking the fourth wall, bro. And when Thunder count. got canceled, I cried, bro. <laughs> I didn't even know what a jobber was, bro. I guess that takes us to May 7th. The amazing Slamboree 2000. The poster is just <sighs> Buff Bagwell giving the kissy lips. Yeah. Um, Man, I don't even let's see here. Do I even have a note about him on this show? That's enough to scare think... you off of the damn show right there. <laughs> well, I will say this: it was at the formerly known as Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. It is now oh, it is now the High V Arena, whatever the hell High V is. <sighs> let's keep that in mind, by the way, where they are for later in the show. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the uh, total capacity for the uh, just for reference is mm, about nineteen about nineteen thousand five hundred, but we'll we'll take some away because we're we'll assume that's for concerts. So I'll say what seventeen sixteen thousand, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Okay. And uh, they probably pulled in about three thousand. Seven thousand one hundred sixty-five. Poor oh, unfortunate oh. souls. Man. They had to tape off how, and tarp off how much of this freaking arena. Sure, it's about, right? Oh, man, that's that's terrible. Yeah. that's. Oh, let me tell you my, my first note here, and you're going to wonder why why no one showed up. This is weird. <laughs> when this happens, this is literally this ass will put your ass in the seat. <laughs> the first note I have is yeah. Ralph is doing the big wiggle. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Dude, this show, bro. I'm looking at this card, bro. Why the hell was Buff Bagwell on the front? By the way, he was in like the middle of the card in a no in, in a nothing match against the total package. Not yeah, but we're glossing over the main thing here. Ralph is did the big wiggle. Oh well, hell yeah. <laughs> let's look at let's look at some of these these matches, bros. All right, first match of the night, not a bad one. Uh, Chris Candido defends the cruiserweight title against the artist 
uh, who it was, was, a, it was a decent match. It was decent. So. For those of you, yes, he was the artist formerly known as Prince Iakea, but then they just hacked it off to just the artist. So I think WWE owes him some royalties every time they call Shinsuke Nakamura that. <laughs> oh, wow. But anyway, <laughs> Terry Funk defended the hardcore title against Norman Smiley and Ralphus. Ralphus was a mystery partner. He was in a, uh, I believe it was like a an eagle suit the week before and it was like a big mystery who's this guy that's norman smiley's partner we're gonna find out on sunday it's ralphus it's ralphus my <laughs> god it's ralphus oh. and yes like i said for the third time he did the big wiggle <laughs> and the- you could hear tony shivani just like biting his lips and stuff. <laughs> he's like my god yes my dreams have come true the next match Sean Stasiak defeats Kurt Hennig for like the 5,000th time in the past month. This is actually the first time they wrestled. They, they were in a match, um, I want to say two weeks ago, something like that. They faced off it, and Sean beat it, him. It turned out just to be like a, yeah, like a quick thing, but this is actually their first real match. Lasted uh, just shy of eight minutes. Uh, next, we got Scott Steiner defending the WCW US title uh, with, by the way, he's got Madeja and Shakira in his corner. I assume that's not the singer. Gee, I wonder what they do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you keep your assumptions to yourself. But, well, when you see them, yeah, you'll know. <laughs> but he defeated Captain Hugh G. Rection via submission. <laughs> And he claims that's his legal government name. He really oh, said that. Oh, God, but. yeah. It's on his birth certificate. Hugh G. Rection. Just like Chuck E. Cheese. Mike you Awesome. Think him with his junk hand? Mike Awesome uh, fought, uh, wrestled at Chris Canyon to a no contest after 12 minutes, 11 seconds. I'm sure that was <laughs> thrilling. Um <laughs> The total package, not the half package or the semi-complete package. No, he's the total package. He defeated Buff Bagwell via submission in a singles match. And uh, I got to point out, this is where Chuck Palumbo debuts. He oh, comes in yeah. wearing Luger's exact attire <laughs> and just beats him up. Because reasons. <laughs> he's called the main event Chuck Palumbo. <laughs> Even though and, uh, he, he is, was never main event, <laughs> never main event anything ever. He, uh, I, I will say that I'm sure that Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell, I'm sure had a respectable match. That you know, Dave Meltzer, I'm sure put over huge in the Observer with multiple stars. Shane Douglas defeated Ric Flair. Those words were said. <laughs> And I'm yeah. saying this, don't get me wrong, I'm a big mark for Shane Douglas, but... Yeah, we know. <laughs> like, god dang, like, re- this happened? Uh, Sting defeated Vampiro, kind of, you know, squashing that feud, but it didn't. It continued. Um, it gets better. No, hold on tight. And listen, listen close, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to say these words in this order. Thirteen and a half minutes... Hulk Hogan defeated Billy Kidman yeah. with Eric Bischoff as a special guest referee. Yeah, real quick. Um, Horace runs in and like the he... Hogan. <laughs> yeah, uh, he runs in and like Bischoff's down and like he uses takes Bischoff's hand and counts the fall uh. on Kid. Yeah, so <laughs> uh. yeah. And then we move on to the main event, bro. And wait, there. Wait, oh, hold on. All right. Hold on. There's something we missed in here. I forget where it happened at. Uh, oh, yeah. It was during the Flair match. So uh, someone comes out under a sting mask. Well, first of all, Russo says if Flair. Oh, Flair says if Russo gets involved, he gets five minutes along with Russo. And so someone comes in under what? a sting mask. <laughs> don't know. I don't want to know. Someone comes <laughs> something in. Something with a robe and a baby's arm. <laughs> Someone comes in and uh, attacks Rick with a Statue of Liberty and breaks it over his head. Because it's reasons, not, bro. It's, <laughs> it's revealed not to be Russo, but David Flair. And this is at like the uh, height of his whole 
craziness character. And the announcers are shocked and say, this is the most disgusting act they've ever witnessed. They've never seen anything like this. <laughs> and then I'm like, uh, yes, you have. You've seen this exact same thing at Super Brawl 99 when David Flair joined the NWO. So you've never seen Whoa. this before. Wait a second. I didn't know this. David Flair joined the NWO? Yeah. At Whoa. Super Brawl 99. Man, who was doing the vetting process for the New World Order? <laughs> I don't know. Man, Vincent, him, <laughs> Horace, Horace, Stevie God. F and Ray. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> They're just letting them all in. Well, all of that, uh, all that goodness brings us to the main event, which is, uh, <sighs> this is uh, this is a thing. Jeff Jarrett and DDP versus well, it's separate. It's a triple threat match for the WCW title. David Arquette, yes, defends the WCW title against Jeff Jarrett the, and DDP. The David Arquette, yes, uh, David Arquette to, em- to you. Needs to be emphasized. That's David Arquette to you. All right, that's right. Uh, My mistake. And it is in a ready to rumble cage match. You said that. I did. Um, I don't know where to go from here. While we're on this, do you know what specific terrible thing we've already mentioned in this episode happened in this very arena? Yeah, I know. We're coming to that. Let's just, uh, let's get to the first crap first. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's hit it. Not too hard, though. I'm going to go to bed soon. (laughs) And if we hit it hard, I'm going to be able to sleep. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, so yeah, this match happens. Arquette <laughs> he was, never gets <laughs> it was thrust upon us. <laughs> Arquette like never gets involved in the match at all. So like the first, yeah. the first part of the ring is like just a match or yeah, just like wrestling. Mm-hmm. The second cage is like a hardcore cage. And before you even ask, yes, the kitchen sink is in the cage. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, but Okay. <laughs> Everything and the kitchen sink. And the third cage, My and God. why wouldn't it be, is a guitar cage. Where this guitar is full. Oh, it's full of guitars. Of freaking course it is. Because, you know, <laughs> uh, Toby Keith and Zach Wilde are going to duke it out, I guess. Yeah. Where's um, Jimmy Page? It's about, <laughs> it's about as good as you would think. <laughs> it's uh, just not. I've seen the match. I yeah I've seen the match. I, it's it's uh yeah it's it's a match. I don't want to be reminded too much about it because you ever see that Simpsons episode where they do a flashback of when Homer makes Bart like a homemade clown bed and it like yeah. traumatizes Bart. It's kind of like yeah. that where he where he's like rocking back and forth. He's like can't sleep. Clown will eat me. <laughs> like it's kind of like that with this match. Like I just rock back and forth. Like uh, David Arquette turned heel. David Arquette turned heel. <laughs> So yeah, the finish comes with he gets up there and he's he's climbing up there. Oh my god, he's gonna grab the belt. No, he's he's waiting for uh Jarrett. He's got a guitar in his hand. They're both climbing. Like okay, he's gonna nail Jarrett. Then he cracks DDP. We got a swerve, bro. He turned heel, bro. Page falls off the third cage onto the second cage. Jarrett climbs up, grabs the title, new champ, and we're at new champ count number four, by the way. That's four new champs within a span of a month, by the way. Just you know. And two of them were Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. I ha- One of them was Arquette. Yeah. I do have to ask, <laughs> what did that do for David Arquette's career? Not that, you know, he pumped out some great movies that people were, like, dying to see after this. But when you're uh, an- on the contrary, I think he did, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, when you're an actor... That you know relies on people need to give a crap about you and go see your films. Why are you turning heel on, on a pay per view? I mean, I guess his his thought process was nobody's going to see this crap. <laughs> well, what was WCW? So, like one quick thing, I'm going to jump ahead real quick. The next line of Nitro Bischoff would actually refer to him as the greatest actor of our time. Mother uh, of God. <laughs> Man, I didn't like. He's yeah. like that's m- like Paul Heyman would tell him to calm down on the lion. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, uh, uh, ro- that so the match is over. Jared's the champ. Out comes Mike Awesome randomly. 
to beat up Paige. <laughs> and, you know, why Why wouldn't he? Because he had to make the moment awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pun. Puns. Puns. I've got him. Uh, um, he, get, he gets a diamond cutter on the cage. It's probably the ugliest diamond cutter I've ever seen because, well, Awesome's face doesn't even hit the damn cage at all. Nice. I think pay. I think DDP might have been hurt more. <laughs> Probably. Um, all of a sudden, like, okay, and also, also, by the way, Chris Canyon got involved. He's up there already. Yeah, um, we're before we get to the Canyon so, contribution, we got to cover something. Are, are we on the Canyon part? Yeah. So, okay. Mike Awesome immediately gets up and just grabs Canyon and no just sells it, bro. Off. Yeah, and throwing off the side of the cage through the uh, stage or the the ramp, the entrance ramp, which is elevated, and yeah, you know, there's crash pads and stuff. All right, real quick for all of you, we mentioned this earlier in the podcast, May twenty third, nineteen ninety, which was almost a year before this event to the day, just like a couple weeks shy of the anniversary, uh, the Kemper Arena which is where this pay-per-view was, hosted the WWF pay-per-view Over the Edge, where WWF superstar Owen Hart fell to his death while attempting to descend from the rafters while in his superhero gimmick of the Blue Blazer. Hmm. Yeah, so, like I said, a man fell to his death for real in this arena almost a year to the day. Before Slambury. What did they do? They had one job. What did they do? They freaking threw a man off a cage. Through a stage. And, you know, not to get ahead, but like, they get a dual thing with him in the hospital. He's wearing like a halo over his whole body. and He says he's crippled and he'll never walk again. Oh, God. It just, the taste of Vince Russo. He just, you know, if there's one word that describes Vince Russo, it's class. <laughs> I just, I can't, yeah. I can't say that with a straight flipping face. I just, my God, I just, he, he had one job, like one job. Don't make reference to that. And he blew it. How no. does he make reference to it? He freaking like copies it and makes it part of the show. Just, why? And why didn't Bret Hart go up and punch him in the head? He was still there. I don't... You can hear, like, Tony Schiavone like, yelling constantly. He broke his back. That broke his back. Oh, my God. His back is broken. <laughs> they kept, like, saying that a hundred times, dude. Oh, my God. I... Okie dokie. All right. Well, that was a thing. All right. Well, that was that, I guess. Ugh. That wraps up this uh, part two of the Vince Russo era. As we said before, there's probably it's probably going to be what four parts of this because it's long and involved, and we don't want to keep. I guarantee you, the next episode is full of some crap. Nice, we're <laughs> full on into the summer, baby. We are through most of May, or no? I'm sorry, we're kicking off into May. That's right, we're. We're jumping into the summer, May 1st. The main event, as a teaser, is, uh, wait, or I'm sorry, May 8th. My bad. Main event as a teaser, Jeff Jarrett defending the WCW title against Sting. Yep. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's we actually got, uh, in the main event of the next three Nitros. We got, we got. <laughs> ratings. We got some heel turns. Uh, man, we got, uh, oh, let me just tell you this, too. Mm-hmm. Here's a, here's a good teaser to start off with. Mon- uh, May eighth becomes Monday Night Ralphus. <laughs> mm, good. Uh, <laughs> that is scream money. I don't know what does money ratings, everything. I just we got some heel turns. We got some face turns. Yeah, uh, we got man. A bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, we got a return here. Wow. Oh, Some intergender matches galore coming up. Oh, man, this is good. Good stuff, bro. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, that does it for this episode. There's a nice little teaser for uh, part three. Unfortunately, part three will not be coming next week. 
because we have something else planned for you, and I'll get to that after letting you know about what's going up on Lay YouTube. Definitely go to our YouTube channel now. Search for the podcast Wrestling Society on YouTube.com. You can find the top five wrestlers that we used to love and now hate, and the top five wrestlers we used to hate and now love. It's going to be a good one. Also, uh, if you good. if you go there now, uh, you can find Kyle and I's super showdown predictions that show in front of uh, 70,000 screaming Australians in a cricket uh, arena, whatever, is going to take place this weekend, and Kyle and I will be running down our predictions, which means next week, br- 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 bro, on the podcast itself, Greg and I will be bringing you the news as we did this week, but we will also, uh, Kyle and I, will be bringing you the Super Showdown Fallout and our analysis of the pay-per-view itself and the Raw and SmackDown after. And on YouTube, uh, the YouTube exclusives next week, Greg and I will be bringing you a review of UFC 229. That's going to be huge. Biggin. Oh, yeah. And we will also be bringing you the top 10 betrayals in wrestling history, boys and girls. My number one betrayal is when Midian put clothes on. Oh, my God. Uh, I was going to go for, uh, I'm sure a lot of those portrayals are going to involve Sting. <laughs> but then uh, but then we move on. Uh, October 17th is where we're going to bring you part three of the Vince Russo era in WCW on Nitro and all the rundown for that. You ready for this, Greg? I think. As ready as you'll ever be? I just, Yeah. <laughs> And uh, also, we will bring you the top five best and the top five worst Ruthless Aggression Era gimmicks. Mm, I can think of a few right off the top of my head for both. (laughs) That was an interesting era, to say the least. Was anybody naked, like Midian? or No. Oh, damn. No, but uh, there was a person who backed up Michael Cole into a closet and read him a poem, but <laughs> but we've got some... Well, if anybody wants to join the Naked Medium fan club, please reach out. And uh, get your t-shirt that says you are uh, part of the fan club. You can get it at redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society. And, and remember, if you ever order one of those shirts, TJ is going to personally call you at some point. Thank you. No, I will not, but I will slip you a DM and say, thanks for buying you Mark. Sweaty, sweaty Mark. No, I'm just kidding. But I will uh, maybe. Send and he'll you he'll type you. he'll type the man and too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then to close out the rest of the month, October. That is October 17th. You can expect that October 24th, in honor of All Hallows Eve coming up, and because we're going to be busy the next week, and I'll tell you what. With Greg and I will be bringing you a Halloween Havoc and No Mercy watch along. Should be good. And on YouTube, you can expect Kyle and I to bring you our WWE Evolution predictions. That should be good. Uh, predicting what's going to happen at the very first ever all-women's pay-per-view. And then Greg and I will be bringing you the top 10 worst gimmick changes in WWE. Kind of fits the uh, whole Halloween thing. So that's two lists in a row where... I'm going to put Naked Meeting and Getting Clothed. It's, I'm wow. sure you will. And then All Hallows Eve itself, October 31st. Kyle and I will bring you our Fallout analysis from WWE Evolution on the podcast. On and you- they will be dressed as Nikki and Brie Bella while doing it for Halloween. I call Brie. Uh, <laughs> and then... On YouTube, we will have our Crown Jewel predictions. I'm sure that's going to be a barn burner of a freaking show, just like last time. But, good news, Shawn Michaels will be returning to the ring, so there's always that. And then... Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. And then Greg and I will be bringing you, in honor of All Hallows' Eve, the top ten gimmick match types. Because I, I got a feeling we're going to talk about a poll, bro. Uh, none of mine will involve a poll, but uh, yeah, 
I don't know. It's not going to go that way, bro. bro, bro. But all right. Well, thank you for joining me today, Greg. This has been interesting. Well, new, new format. And I'm sorry to everyone we offended. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to everyone we offended by reminding you about all of this. That's what but, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but there's more to come. More goodness. And yes, we have we have a ton planned. We may, or may, like I said, this is a tentative schedule. We may have a Halloween Havoc watch along. And kind of scrap the No Mercy watch along, just uh, bringing you some more Vinny Ruru. But it's still up in the air right now. Greg and I will discuss and we'll bring you an update on next week's show, bros. Thanks for joining me, Greg, and we'll see you later. Peace. Later. This has been a Drama City production.